There are a couple of shorthands for defining grids and in this video I'm going to look at the explicit grid shorthand. This is the grid template property. I have a grid here where I've set display grid and I've defined grid template columns and grid template rows. I'm using the individual properties here. So we could define both at once by using grid template. So this is fairly simple. We say grid template and then the first value is the track listing for our rows and then we have a slash and then we add the track listing for our columns. So we could now remove those two properties and this all just carries on working as before. So that's fairly simple. We've got the two track listings separated by a forward slash. You can also pass grid template areas to this shorthand. So I've got an example here where I'm creating a layout using grid template areas. So it's the same layout, but this time we've named the different areas and then I'm laying those out on the grid using that kind of ASCII art syntax. Now we can switch this to using a shorthand. So we use grid template. And so we're still defining our template. And there we go. Now that looks quite confusing, so I can explain that. What we've got here, we've got our grid template areas definition, and that's also defining row sizes. So this is the first row, and then we've got the size of that row, which is auto. And then we've got the second row, and then the size of that row, which is 300 pixels. We could actually leave off that auto. Um, rows that don't have a size will be sized auto by default and you can kind of see how this works. We change this to say 200 pixels. You can see that top row changing its size. So this is the row size here. After the slash we then have the columns. So we've got our one fraction unit columns set up here. Again if we play around with that you can see how the column track sizes change. So that's the grid template shorthand. Uh, if you came across that in some code, you might find that quite baffling, but that's how it's working.